good day, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, and welcome back to Team Fortress 2. First of all, I would like to apologize in advance for the parts of this gameplay where the sound loops out and back in. That's due to me using my mic, and I didn't set fraps to record my voice live. Second, I apologize for the lack of videos over the past couple of days. I'll explain why that was in a few seconds. And thirdly, I apologize for making all of these apologies. I I'm a Canadian, what's your excuse, eh? So to start off the reason of no videos lately, it's kind of important to point out that I did initially have an MVM gameplay that I was going to upload. A couple of days ago, I had decided to record a full Rottenberg mission, but fraps began to lag out on me during one of my attempts. Naturally, I gave no second thought about it, and I just said, you know, why don't I just use the demo recording tool in the Source Engine, and then use VDub to create a video file out of it. For those of you who seem confused, VDub is a program that allows you to compile all frames from the TF2 demo recording, and you can create gameplays using that method. So, back to the main purpose of the story here. I jumped into a Rottenberg mission, and I recorded with that demo tool. It was successful, a flawless victory, I recorded over 35 minutes of footage, and then tried to use VDub. Now, I'm no expert with this program, and I'm not sure if it has certain file size restrictions, but either way, the video preview was not smooth at all, the audio was bugging out, and from here I just said, fine, you know what, I'll just use Fraps to record the demo in-game, and hope to god that it does not lag out. So, I began to do just that, and Fraps was thankfully recording as smooth as peanut butter. So, I walked away to do other things with my spare time, and minutes later, I walked back in. And then I noticed that Fraps was no longer recording. Of course, I was beginning to get pretty mad about this, and I knew that the problem was I had run out of disk space on my hard drive. Sure enough, my one terabyte drive was almost completely full. I went through the basic solutions, deleting video files, clearing disk space using the Windows cleanup features, but I was only receiving a few gigabytes of space back. And from here on, my temper was at a boiling point. My, my lid was about to explode off and spew volcano innards everywhere. And then it dawned on me. I go into my TF2 files, and I discovered that I had saved over 100,000 frames from the demo recording software. Could you guess what I did next? I deleted every single one of those files, and I received back over two-thirds of storage space on my hard drive. Two-thirds! The worst part is, the problems didn't stop here. I tried to record the demo with Fraps once more after clearing all that disk space, and things started off fairly smooth, it was looking pretty promising. And then Fraps began to suffer from a severe case of lag spikes. I soon discovered that this condition was fatal, and the only way I could possibly save my poor computer was to buy a second hard drive. Yesterday, it arrived in the mail, I had it installed, everything works, Fraps records smooth once more. So now, I can have Fraps write all my videos onto my new drive. There are two lessons to be learned from this entire chain of events. One, never record such massive demo files to the point where you have over 100,000 frames on your hard drive. And two, if you have a custom-built PC that you want to use to record video game footage on, please, please go the extra mile and buy a second hard drive to write your videos on. I can't stress this enough. So, moving on to the gameplay, you'll notice that this does not look like Rottenberg at all. And that's because I had apparently deleted all my TF2 demo files without even knowing it. So finding this out today, I was pretty discouraged at first. However, I did realize that what I initially recorded was not very good gameplay on my part. I had made some pretty big mistakes, well not big mistakes, just... I wasn't very good at collecting all that money. Thankfully, during the course of which I was waiting for my new hard drive to come in, I played more MVM and picked up some tips, primarily learning not to focus so much on killing the bigger robots, but collecting money dropped by the smaller mooks who were entering the field. And, this gameplay is just about perfect in every way. I had a solid, reliable team, we never got pushed back to gates A or B, and most importantly, I played my role as a scout properly, and we never missed a single credit. That is, except on the final wave, but chances are, collecting money on the final wave is not a vitality unless your teammates die and they need to spend some of it to respawn quickly. 
So, to give a few tips over playing Scout, I'll go over the basics first. Your primary weapon can be just about anything. There aren't really any limits or restrictions in that field. Me personally, I choose to use the scatter gun. Your secondary can be sort of optional. If you're playing with a good sniper who's using the Jurati, you may not need to use the Bad Milk, since both of these secondaries have slowdown upgrades on the robots. So, feel free to experiment with something like the Criticola if you have a Jurati sniper on your team. Me, I always stick with the Mad Milk because chances of a sniper playing in man-up mode, they're few and far between. Then there's your melee weapon, which I find to be semi-optional. Here I always use the Fan of War, because it has the ability to tag robots to take mini-crit damage. I guess you could argue that if there's a soldier using the buff banner or a sniper using the Jurati again, then equipping this might not be necessary. The thing is, however, the Fan of War is the only weapon in the game that can mark targets for mini-crits at any given time. There's no recharge rate on either, the only limit being that you can only mark one victim for death at a time. As far as scout melee goes, they're all very quirky in my opinion, but the fan might be your best bet. So now let's move on to upgrading. I recommend you start off with character attributes, you know, things like resistance to whatever the biggest threats be during that wave. Whatever given wave it is, like for example if the first wave has giant soldiers, then I usually put on blast and crit resistance. And as a general thing, I also like to put on running speed, just because Running speed is one of my top priorities, I mean, gotta go fast. So, another example for whatever you're going to be doing to leveling up your weapons or your character, this one is in particular for your secondary. If there are big scouts appearing in the wave, then this is where the Mad Milk comes into play. As I mentioned earlier, if there isn't a sniper on your team using Jurati, you'll be a big credit to the team by putting slowdown effect on the Mad Milk. Just pay attention to where the big scouts are coming from, though and be sure to communicate with, like, your medic, just because this shield upgrade will block scouts from slipping by. And then there's also that sentry spot at the platform right next to the truck that the robots can't seem to figure out how to pass when there's a big sentry built there. Now, when I'm all pumped up with resistances, like moving speed and mad milk attributes, I usually start upgrading my primary weapon from here. Whatever weapon you choose to equip, upgrades, they're all subjective. What I usually go for on the gun is damage, firing, and reloading speed. Now we come to one of our bigger baddies of this mission. This is Empire Escalation, by the way. And the evil necromancer of all robots is known as the giant heel on kill heavy, who's sporting a rusty metallic toque. Oh, the horror! So, if you don't know what this guy does, then you really need to get yourself educated. The game here is all about not getting absolutely destroyed by this boss, because if he gets one kill, he'll receive about one-sixth of his health in return. Thankfully, my team kept this took-wearing rust bucket at bay, and he never managed to get a kill on any of us. This wave will soon begin to send in more of these clowns, but they have lower health, and they're much easier to kill. So, one thing I'd also like to point out is, if anyone begins to yell at you if you stay as a scout during the final wave of a mission, just tell them to shut up. It's really your choice as to what class you want to be in the end, thanks to the refunding feature, of course, so don't let any metagamers tell you what to do. Thankfully, this didn't occur at all during this game. At the end of this mission, I only received some basic loot, but I can show you, however, what it was I received in the Rodenberg tour I spoke of earlier in the video. And what I found was a professional killstreak hamshank kit fabricator. For the past couple of days, I found all the parts I needed in both tours, trades with friends, and the Steam market. And here it is on the screen right now. Ah, there it is. The ham tram. Ooh, ooh, ooh. aren't I so clever? I still haven't found my Australian scattergun that I've been dreaming of since I began to do these tours, but I'm sure that there is a time and place for that someday, and I'm pretty content with the ham that I've received so far. So, since I have more videos that I need to begin working on soon, I'd better end this one right off here. Right off here, that makes sense, right? Well, th thank you guys very much for watching. Have a great day or evening. Thank you so much for your patience as well. It means a lot. And I guess I will see you in the next video. Ham!